Okay, I was asked, and excuse me, I have a cough drop in my mouth. I was asked how to make eyes on the loom because somebody didn't really want to crochet. If you ask somebody, this video is for you. Okay, this is the eye I'm talking about. Ignore these two pink strands behind it. That's actually for attaching it, partially helping you to attach it to the um, project if you choose to do it that way. We're doing the white part on the loom, and then I used the pom pom makeup for this part. And I didn't quite do it the same way. That if you've seen these pom poms, was the tiniest pom pom that I was able that I have on me. But if you can find a tinier one, go right ahead. I wish I could tell you how big this one is, but I don't remember. Um, it's got a little pink color to it. Let me see if I can get it into this shot here. I don't remember how big it is, but I only actually used one side of it. I only used one side and wrapped one side, closed it down, cut it, and do like we normally do. I did not use both sides. I only used one so that it wouldn't be as it's still poofy, but it's not as poofy. Or you can do a different thing. You can um, just kind of whip the color you want in there. But if you want to do the basic eye, excuse me, we're going to do the drawstring cast on. We're using this loom, which I know, I, I swear I'm coming up with so many different uses for this. And we're going to do the drawstring cast on. So what we're going to do, if you've seen me do this before, now what you're going to say is, well, wait a minute, when you normally do the drawstring, you have a place to anchor it, and you don't. Well, you have two choices. You can anchor it down on one of these pegs. Or you can just simply kind of whip your thumb through it and hold it against the, the thing. That's all I'm doing is holding it against there. And then you can kind of take the string that usually hangs down and just kind of hold on to it. And then do your drawstring cast on. Like you normally would. Now it may not come out exactly the same because this is a smaller peg. Or a smaller loom. But the idea is there. And then you're going to wrap it around after you go all the way back through. Okay, and right now I'm noticing that I have two strands, so I gotta check that out here. Alright. So you're gonna go back, forth, to the back, to the front, to the back, to the front, to the back, to the front, to the back, and then wrap it around. Okay, until you get to there. Oops. I still want to cooperate. And then wherever there's two strands, you're gonna knit over. I mean, this isn't going to be a perfect drawstring cast on. This is just going to be enough to kind of do what we want to do. Now, because we're working in such a tight space, we're actually going to use the three or two, one over two stitch to make it a little tighter. So now I'm going to wrap until all strands have, all pegs have three. And you may have to push the strands down a little bit. We're working until they all have three. Which may mean one gets doubled back. You can count, make sure there's three on it. And then you're taking the bottom one over the top one. It's a one over two stitch. And be careful that your pegs don't fall out. You need to kind of push it down a little bit. I hate that if I'm working on a project and my pegs pop out. It frustrates me. Because sometimes it's come out so bad that I couldn't fix it. And there we go. We got our one over two stitch. Because we want it to be as tightly in there as we can. For our eye. And you gotta, oops, keep losing those up there. Push these down a little bit. And then wrap one more time. Again, so we have three strands. Go around. Take the bottom strand over the top two. I think the reason it's popping out is it might be a little too tightly wrapped. So be aware of that as you're working. Now the reason it was pink on uh, my eye is because I happen to be playing around with the idea that's the yarn I had closest to me. And would you believe I actually don't have any black yarn on me right now? So I have other colors that would have worked better for eye color than pink because all I can think now is, oh great, I'm doing a pink eye. But um, it really depends on what you're going to use it for. Okay, once you get enough around, you can take this string, string that we normally hide in there Give it a little tug to get rid of that loop, and then tuck it underneath so that it falls down in the spool. And you can use your tool if you need to to kind of push it down on the inside until you can kind of see it. Or you reach up and grab it. I've done that before. Okay, so it's hanging like we normally do. Um, I can't remember exactly how many times I went around, but basically you want to go around until this is closed off on the inside. You can give it a little tuck now and realize, oh, well, it's not going to be enough yet, so we got to go around a few more times. And that's why I like this. It's pretty simple. 
and go into all three of my artistic until they all have three on there again and at the bottom one over the top two and you're doing this until you close off the middle and then we're going to use our crochet hook to take it off real simple if you've done my crochet offing whatever you want to call it find off whatever that's what we're going to use on this and it'll create that circle we need to kind of be the eye and it won't be perfect but it'll still be cute especially for kids hats and stuff or I was even thinking you can make a bunch of these and put them on there if you wanted to just add design effect to it. Okay. Um, and you're going to be like, okay, when do we get to pull a string? And you can test it. Like I said, when you're looking at it and you start pulling, it's not quite yet because so we don't want to do it too hard. So we want to go around again. It's not quite the tightness that we want it to have in order to be an eye. Be careful you're only grabbing one strand. I've noticed myself before grab more than one. And I don't notice it for a while. I'm like, oh, I messed up. And it's really hard sometimes to go back and fix a mistake. And I hate having to go back and fix mistakes, as we all do. Sometimes I'd rather just start over than try to fix my mistake. And you're better just, just making sure it's really on it. And you can keep track. When you're doing this yourself, grab this paper. And go around and count how many times you go around so that you'll know for the next time of one that you want to do what amount around works best for you. I think we can try this last time and then I think we'll try tightening it and I think it will work. But I've used this in, like I said, for jewelry, for tube scarves, for purse handles, um, now for eyes. So you really do get your money's worth, whatever you want. I can't remember how much I paid for this one. But when you think of all the different products you can do with it, you really get your money worth. Okay, let's try pulling the string again. Okay, and here we go. All right, now it may not look like it's doing it, but you're going to push this down. Okay, and if you look, you can see that it's closed off. Okay, and that's going to work pretty good, I think, for us. Because keep in mind, it's a little more down than it needs to be because it's creating a different effect. And you could actually do this idea and do the drawstring cast on and come up and almost make like a tulip effect too if you want with this loom because it kind of dips down a little bit because it won't flatten out until we take it off it a little bit. So you could come up a little higher and make it like a flower if you wanted to. So don't hesitate to play around with these looms. I do not put them. Okay, so once we get it to kind of where we feel it's closed off enough, bring the loops up because I'm actually keeping both loops up there. I know normally I don't. Normally I tell you that I like to have this one loom or one loop, but I'll leave both on there. And get yourself a crochet hook, and we're just going to take this off like we would normally take off a circle loom. Okay, so we're going <clears> to <throat> excuse me. Get these two looms off. I know I'm going to put this down a little bit because it's going to be a little easier to show you. Okay, so we take these two loops off, which can be tricky. Put it on our crochet hook, and I believe let's see. I believe I only did one strand or one loop in between. That's what I think I did. I gotta think here. Let me see. Well, uh, for the sake of it, I'm gonna do two loops in between. So I think that's actually what I did instead. Two loops in between, and then pick up your next bat. Oops. Really tricky to show sometimes. Okay. And then you're gonna take the back over the front. Slow this a little more because it's really not. I need to have it steady. All right, and then two more. And pick up the next batch. All right, and the back over the front. Because we will close off the drawstring after we get this off. It may be a little curled at first, but you can flatten it. Keep in mind that it will flatten. Ah, getting so close to the end, it makes it really hard to show you guys. Now I've already shown how to do pom-pom maker 
So I'm not going to show you how to do that part on this. Go back and look at my videos for using a pom-pom maker. And like I said, just use one half of it. It's pretty simple to do if you have a clover or any other way you want to do it, if you choose to do that. If you don't, you can always use the other side of this and decide to do a different color that you can kind of sew together. Two chains. And right now I know what you're looking at. It's looking at that. I'm hoping we can get it to flatten out. Maybe I only did one. Um, and then we go back over here because there's a little bit of a gap. And we go back to where we started and grab a loop there. And turn it off. And then cut off your excess string. And bring it through. Okay, and now I'm going to close off the drawstring part like we would normally do. Now this is curling, but when you put it on a project, you will be flattening it out. So keep that in mind that, yes, it's curling now, so, but when you put it on a project, you're going to be flattening it out. See, it's kind of flattening itself out. So don't look at it and say, oh, it's not doing what I want it to do. Well, once you sew it onto the other project, it's going to do what you want it to do. So we're closing off the drawstring that we started with just to make sure it's not gonna it's any issues and as you can see it's pretty closed off and that's a little tricky to see there and it's a little pushed out but once you put it on a I wish I had uh, something here that was knitted that I could show you it on but all my knitting stuff is um, put away right now okay, and I usually tie a little I didn't get that close enough I usually try to tie a little knot in at the end, just to kind of keep it from coming off if I can. And I cut that strand off. I thought I just lost my other hook again. But I'm really good at doing that. Okay, anybody see my other hook? <laughs> okay, so that's what we have now is we have this. And we have, we just gotta finish drawing this off. I know I'm gonna, oh, there it is. It's right here. Okay, but we don't need that right now. And we're just going to close off this by going next to it like we normally would. Come back down here and see, we normally would. We go next to it, grab the yarn, and create our loop, and put our string through the loop, and pull it so that it kind of creates a knot. And if you want to get extra secure, you can just do another little hand knot yourself. Put your extra strand. And there you go. This right here becomes the white part of your eye. You can kind of pull it out and stretch it. And you have this little oopsie. You can just kind of make sure that that gets kind of hidden. And then just take this. Back up a little bit. Take this and sew it onto your hat or whatever. And it's a little flat thing. And then if you want to, you can use this. Or I said I wish I had another color next to me, but I don't. Um, you can just take and sew a black dot or a green dot or whatever. Or make it out of that. And this gives you the base of the, the eyeball. And then you can, I'm assuming, try doing the other side and see if it works for that as well. Where you can do your other color here and then you can attach it right on top of it if it's small enough. So I just wanted to show briefly, try to keep it short, of how you can do a little eyeball if you wanted effect on there. Like I said, it's just a simple little thing. Then you just sew it onto your hat or whatever product you want to have this on it. And then make sure you have your alternating color for the eye itself and see if it works. I hope this helped people out and I can't wait to do the next video.